I'm going to do this set of pages in um, my practice book. This is an old dictionary and I use it to practice altered book techniques or paint techniques or whatever. Um, so I'm going to do this layout in here and one of the things that I like about dictionaries is the all over text. The thing that I don't like about this one is that it has these illustrations and very often they fall in an awkward place in my layout. So what I've done is um, I usually remove pages from books before I work in them and I save them in the back back here and um, so I just took one and tore some text and I'm going to use it to cover up these pages as I work. I'm going to do a glaze so that the text shines through and I'm just using liquid Mac medium and some inexpensive craft acrylics. Just kind of the poor, poor woman's glaze. just want to mix it together so that it thins out the pigment and makes it a little more transparent. That looks good. And as I work, I'm going to also lay down these text pieces. So I'm using matte medium, which is also my glue for paper. You just go ahead and use the glaze to glue it down. You can see how transparent this is. The text is just shining right through. If you wanted to make it a little more opaque, you could add more paint to it. Or you can go over it with a second coat once this dries if you decide it's too transparent. Now I'm just going to let this dry and uh, go and work on my blocks that I'm going to use on top of this background. I'm going to use the black and white sheets from the Dream Kit. These are designed to be colored in with paints or pencils or markers. And I'm just going to choose the blocks that I want to use on my page. So I think this one I'm going to use this Wish. And I'm going to do probably all of these and the moon and a quote. But there are also these blank boxes that I kind of like. So I'm going to um, cut out a few things and uh, lay them out on the table and see which ones I like. So these are the pieces that I've decided to use. And I've cut them out and you'll notice that I haven't cut them on the black surround. I've left a little border and that's because I'm going to take them down and block them so that I can use them with wet media. So let me get my supplies out for that and I'll show you how to do it. So here are my pieces and I'm uh, in the process of blocking them. What I'm doing is just taping them down with masking tape to a piece of scrap lumber and I'm doing this because I know I'm going to use some watercolor on them and even though these pieces are printed on Bristol stock it's still going to have a tendency to roll and curl a little bit so this will help keep them flat as they dry and it will minimize the wrinkling and this is sort of what watercolor artists do when they're working and they're not working on a solid block if they're just working on a regular you know, piece of paper. Um, so all you do is just tear off a piece of tape and put it along the edge and press it down. And I usually do the two long sides first and then the short side. And 
you can go right up to the black edge on these pieces or even overlap the black edge a little bit. The pieces are laid out sort of the way I'm going to have them on the page and I did that because I'm going to paint them all at once and it sort of helps me to um, see the composition but I could just as easily um, do these pieces at different times and not have them on the board all at once. This is really a personal preference sort of thing. You could block the entire sheet before cutting the pieces out and paint them all and then use them later. It's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to work these pages in Twinkling H2Os. Um, so I have my color palette pulled out. I think this is Mango Mamba and this is Azalea and this is Teal. And I've just uh, given them a little spritz of water to soften up the surface a little bit. And I'm also going to use some water brushes. These are brushes that have um, water in the handle um, and I find them easier to use with these paints. And I have a palette here but um, really I almost always work with these paints out of the container. I don't, I don't mess with the palette too much. Um, I just, you know, squeeze a little water in with my brush and keep working. And I do have a tiny bit of water over here in a container to rinse out the tip of my brush and clean it off. But um, really most of the water that I do is from the handle of the brush. So, I have all my blocked pieces here, and I'm just going to dive in and start painting. So I'm, as I'm doing these larger sections, you notice that I've switched to a larger brush and um, that I'm doing sort of a darker uh, ring of pigment around the outside and then feathering it inward as much as I can, avoiding my letters or um, down here I'm going to be dodging the stars or the clouds or whatever. Um, and I'm uh, doing most of the work with the water brush, sort of um, uh, adding more water as I um, head toward the center to get a, a paler color. Um, some of the pigment has gone up into the well of the brush, into the handle, and colored the water. So um, always be aware of that if you're using water brushes. You have to dump it out and um, start over if you're going to switch colors. So in these lighter sections here, I'm using very little pigment and um, a lot of water to feather it down and blend it out. And because it's watercolor, it's never going to be perfect. Um, 
and even. So embrace the blotchiness and embrace the, the texture of the watercolor. Um, the other thing is that periodically you'll see me um, just take the water brush and scrub at an area to like this right here where oops, where the pink has gotten onto the yellow. If you're very gentle, you can lift the pink and leave the yellow behind. But you have to be very careful not to lift too much and also not to blend too much because what can happen is you'll get an area so wet that the pink will start to bleed into it and then it just turns into a big mess. So very gently just lift the pigment and sometimes it does start to blend a little bit and that's okay. It's watercolor. If I wanted it to be perfect and crisp I would be using markers, right? I let these pieces dry overnight and um, they're, they come out pretty flat. There's um, a little rippling over here where my tape lifted off the white edge of the paper. But for the most part, these are reasonably flat. And the reason that that's important to me is because I'm going to apply these to my book and uh, flat around the edges at least means better contact when I do my gluing. So now all I have to do is peel this off and you want to pull your tape away from the edge that you're peeling it from. That way you won't uh, tear any of your paper away. And um, after I get these all lifted up, I'm going to cut around the black edges. So here, I just lifted uh, a little bit of the paper away. And because I didn't tape over any of the black edge, it's not really going to show at all. But um, if you do lift um, paper away and you want to continue to use it, just burnish it down on the surface with the back of your thumbnail and that will keep all those little fuzzy fibers from standing up and looking really obvious and will give you a nice flat surface. So I'm going to peel all these up and cut around the edges and then I'll be ready to put the pieces into my book. Here's my uh, set of pages with the pieces laid out on them and this one is actually already um, attached with this um, ATG tape. Um, I like this because it gives a nice strong bond. Um, the drawback is that you have to get the tape right along the edge of the piece otherwise you end up with it lifting like it is right along here. Um, anywhere that the um, piece has to curve. Um, your other options would be glue stick, which um, I like for pages that remain relatively flat, but because these pieces are large enough that they are um, sort of rolling into the spine a little bit, the glue stick might um, not hold those places where the page is uh, curving downward. 
Um, and this Scotch um, quick drying tacky glue, I like this a lot because you basically put a line of glue on your piece, put it down, hold it in place for a couple seconds, and it sticks. Um, so this is probably the best choice. I'm not um, recommending that you do this with matte medium or um, any sort of liquid glue that would go over the top of the pieces because um, watercolor might lift a little bit. So um, putting a coat of acrylic medium over the top of it really isn't the best thing. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these pieces down, probably with ATG tape, um, except for this piece and the edge of this piece where I'm going to use a little bit of tacky glue. Um, and once I get that stuck in place, I'll show you what I do for finishing. One more thing before I stick all these pieces down. All these pieces have a rather heavy dark line around the outer edge and if as you were cutting you weren't perfectly precise and you ended up with white along the edge, or even if you didn't, um, you can take a sharpie and drag it along the edge to color anything that's left behind. And I like to do this anyway even if my cutting was um, pretty precise because um, when you cut, um, there's always going to be a sort of a white halo uh, along the edge of your pieces. So unless it's viewed exactly straight on, you're going to see that little white cut edge. But if you drag the Sharpie along it, it's going to be black and the pieces are really going to um, stand out a little bit better. So um, I did a little sharpening around the edges of all these pieces just to uh, get rid of that white halo. Now I'm doing some finishing. My pieces are all stuck down to the page. And um, I'm just adding a few little glitter glue dots to this star section. This is just a little tube of glitter glue that I got. They come in like, I don't know, four packs or six pa packs at the dollar store. They're inexpensive and I like them because unlike a big bottle of glitter glue which um, tends to dry out pretty quickly and um, you have to do a lot of shaking to get the glue down to the tip, these tubes squeeze really easily. Um, there's not a lot of glue in them. They don't last very long and if they dry out, I'm only out 10 or 15 cents. Um, because they were, you know, six for a dollar. So, um, and I'm just very lightly doing little dots. Um, and this dollar store glitter glue, unlike stuff that you get at the craft store, um, there's not a lot of glitter in the binder. So you get a more delicate effect from it. And even though it looks a little blobby going on, um, all that binder is going to go away and just the glitter is going to remain behind. So, and I think it's a nice um, contrast to the sparkle in the twinkling H2Os. And I'm just going to use a bamboo skewer to do this. And I, I like this as an applicator tool because it gives me dots of two different sizes. Teeny tiny dots off the point and slightly larger dots off the back of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some highlights to these eyes. Which I purposely left out of the drawing because I knew that the way I use them would be to paint the eyes a color and if I left that dot it would end up being green in this case. Um, so it's easier to just apply it in. And then what I can do is with this end I can do the same dots I just did in glitter in white 
Now you just sort of have to pick a spot to do this. I think on this I'm going to do it right at the end of the swirl. Each one of these swirls, just like that. And that way I have dots going in more than one thing in more than one media. So it's not all just glitter glue dots or all gesso dots. It's uh, a variety of things. Um, and mixing your media that way creates a more visually interesting page.